Let me offer a few words about the, the Old Testament readings. Um, we're more reflecting all the time on the Gospels, but let me just look at our first reading today from the book of Kings, from the second book of Kings. And we'll be with the second book of Kings tomorrow, and then we'll get in, we will leave, leave the book of Kings, and we'll go to the birth of John the Baptist Thursday and Friday, the Sacred Heart. So we'll move away. And next week we will not be reading from the first or second book of Kings. So insofar as we've been with it for a couple of weeks here, let me give you a strange readings, very strange readings about destruction and blessing and reversal and all that. First and second book of Kings, you'll find in the historical books in your Bible, is meant to be something an insight into the history of the people of Israel. It covers both books. They were all one book in the origin, so I'll speak about them as one book. They speak about about 400 years of the history of the people of Israel. At the beginning of the first book of Kings, David is dying, and we're talking about his successor and go through a lot of stuff and Solomon becomes his successor. And then goes on through the kings and goes through the division in the, in the kingdom of Israel. It's divided, north and south, Israel and Judah. Then you have the exile. You have the exile in there where the Jews were exiled in Babylonia. That was a great wound. And even today, when you read the scriptures of the Old Testament, they talk about before the exile and after the exile. Part of that is the temple in Jerusalem is destroyed. Um, part of the destruction of Judah. And then eventually they'll come back and rebuild the temple and so forth. The readings are kind of strange in the Old Testament, strange to us. And let me explain some insights so that we begin to interpret them in a reasonable and intelligent way. See, the people of Israel believed in an afterlife. They believed there was a place for, for the souls of the just and so on. But they did not believe in sanctions, rewards, and punishments. This will come very late in their history, maybe about 100, 200 years before Christ in the Book of Wisdom. Before that, they believed there was an afterlife but no rewards and punishments. Therefore, rewards and punishments came in this life. So when they won a war, it was God who won the war. When they lost the war, it was their fault. They must have sinned. They must have done something wrong because God is in charge of everything. And therefore, prosperity was a sign of God's blessing. If you had many sheep, many goats, and great herds, it was sign God blessed you. If you didn't, somehow you must have sinned. There's something that God is punishing you. The idea of having many sons was a sign of God's benevolence because now my progeny will be, my name will go on and on. That's a sign of God's blessing. So sons were very important. Even to this day, in the Semitic culture, go over to Jerusalem and places in the Semitic world. If a man's name is Habib and he has a son named Eleazar, his first son, he changes his name. He is so conscious of God's blessing and the privilege of having a son, he changes his name to Abu Eleazar. That's why you see a lot of Abu names. Abu means father. And he's no longer Habib. Now he's Abu Eliazar. So that was part of the blessing of God to have sons. Uh, when they have, you have no children, it was God's lack of favor to you. Fine, we still do this ourselves, by the way. In the ninth chapter of the Gospel of John, there's a long story that we use for the RCIA about a man born blind. You remember this. And he's born blind, and his apostles say, he's just, hey, Jesus, 
Why is this man born blind? But his sin or the sin of his parents. There must be some reason why he's born blind. Jesus said, no, it's for the glory of God. The glory of God will be revealed. We're caught in this ourselves sometimes because when things go wrong, we're inclined to say, God, I don't deserve this. No, I've, I've done, kept the commandments, I've gone to the mass, I've used the envelopes, I've registered, and now things go wrong. And the other fellow over here who is a criminal, he seems to prosper. So God, what are you doing to us? Because we have taken on the image of the Old Testament God. That when I'm blessed, it's a sign of God's favor. If I have a difficulty or I'm asked to carry a cross, I must have done something wrong. Sometimes we think that way. When you begin to interpret the Old Testament in terms of uh, how the action of God, they were God's people, they were always God's people, and God was always faithful. God was faithful. And therefore, if something went wrong, it was never uh, God's fault. It was our fault. We must have sinned because God is faithful. Now, when you understand it that way, all the winning of the wars and the losing of the wars and the prosperity and the famine and all these things, they kind of to fall into place when you understand how they were interpreting the interventions of God. Keep that in mind. We'll be reading tomorrow again <coughs> from the Book of Kings. <coughs> so when you, when you read the Old Testament, you have to read it in context how the people of Israel were thinking and how they understood the actions of God in their lives. Amen. We pause now for a moment of prayer.